In 1911, Viennese expressionist artist Oskar Kokoschka is introduced to Alma Meller, the widow of composer Gustav Meller. Oskar folds obsessively, intensely, and possessively hard, but for Alma, there is much to be desired. By 1913, their relationship is hanging on a thread. Alma becomes pregnant and, against Oscar's wishes, has the child aborted. Devastated, Oscar, at the outbreak of World War I in 1914, volunteers to serve with the Austrian army. While stationed in Russia, Oscar receives serious injuries from a rebellious bayonet. He soon returns home to find Alma has married a previous love, architect Walter Gropius. He reacts well. In 1918, he sends detailed physical descriptions and full-scale hand drawings to doll maker Hermine Moose and commissions her to create a life-size Alma Meller doll to her exact anatomical likeness. He writes in his journals, Yesterday I sent a life-size drawing of my beloved, and I ask you to copy this most carefully and to transform it into reality. Pay special attention to the dimensions of the head and neck, to the rib cage, the rump, and the limbs. The point of all of this for me is an experience which I must be able to embrace. The doll takes moves a full six months to complete. Oscar is impatient, and by this time already found another means of entertainment, a serving maid named Hulda Tho. She shows the utmost commitment while carving his initials into her breast. Oscar remains preoccupied with the thought of the doll. Finally, in February of 1919, the Alma Meller doll is delivered, and despite Oscar's request for a natural skin, the doll is made with shaggy imitation of a bedside rug. Oscar is disappointed with the results, which he promptly voices in a letter to Hermine Moose. I was honestly shocked by your doll, which although I was long prepared for a certain distance from reality, contradicts what I demanded of it and hoped of you in too many ways. The outer shell is a polar bear pelt, suitable for a shaggy imitation bedside rug rather than a soft and pliable skin of a woman. The result of that, I cannot even dress the doll, which you knew was my intention, let alone array her in delicate and precious robes. Even attempting to pull on one stocking would be like asking a French dancing master to waltz with a polar bear. Despite this, Oscar is determined to make all the waiting worth it. He paints and sketches the doll as he once painted Alma herself. To build a buzz around it, he evidently persuades Holder to cultivate rumors about the silent woman. Soon stories emerge about his long carriage rides with her, their trips to the opera together, and perhaps more secretive private rendezvous. At a party arranged to be the silent woman's introduction to Oscar's friends, the doll unexpectedly meets her, her cruel fate. Finally, after I had drawn it and painted it over and over again, I decided to do away with it. It had managed to cure me completely of my passion. So I gave a big champagne party with chamber music, during which my maid Holda exhibited the doll in all its beautiful clothes for the last time. When dawn broke, I was quite drunk, as was everyone else. I beheaded it out in the garden and broke a bottle of red wine over its head. This was the end of The Silent Woman. <laughs>